Hello and welcome back to NerdZap. Today we're going to be looking at a really simple way to install Windows 11 on your Steam Deck. And the great thing about this method is that all you need is a Steam Deck, either LCD or OLED, and a micro SD card. And that's it. You don't need a PC, a Mac, any additional hardware, so this should be accessible for pretty much anybody that's watching. Now I made another tutorial on this a little while ago and it ended up being one of the most watched videos on my channel, so thank you so much for all the support there. But looking through the comments, I noticed there were a few people who were having similar issues, there was a lot of questions on there, so I thought it's time to make a version 2. Now the most notable differences between this version and the previous version is that I've included all the latest Windows updates in the image and I've also directly in injected the Steam Deck drivers for both the LCD and the OLED into the Windows image, so you should be able to get online as soon as the setup is finished. Now, I'd just like to mention that there is a section at the end of this video that has a couple of tips on how to get Windows 11 running nice and smoothly on your Steam Deck, but also I've taken the time to collate the most common queries issues from the previous video and put together a list of frequently asked questions. I do highly recommend watching the whole tutorial and the section at the end with the FAQs before you start the setup on your Steam Deck as that should save you a lot of time and potential headaches later on. But if you still have questions or if you're having any problems, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Right, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to remove any SD card from the Steam Deck that you don't want to lose the data on because this process will wipe the SD card. So we're going to use a separate one for the Windows installation. So I'm just going to take this one out, which has my Steam games on it. And I'm going to put this one in, which is my one that came with the Insta360, um, to install Windows on. If you want more details on which type of micro SD card to use, then stick around to the end as I cover it in the FAQs. So now you've done that, you need to boot into desktop mode and to do that you hold down the power button and select switch to desktop. Okay, so now you're in desktop mode, the first thing we need to do is to set what's called a super user password. If you've already done that on your Steam Deck, feel free to skip ahead, but if you haven't, I'll show you now, it's really simple. So go to the menu here, select the icon next to where it says Steam Deck user. And once that loads up, you should have an option here to set a password. I've already set mine, so it's saying change password. But just set a password here and make a note of it because you will need it later on for this process. And you may end up needing it for other things later on your Steam Deck as well. So now you've got your password set, you need to go into your browser. And in there you need to search for Etcher. So I'm going to hold the Steam Deck and press X to bring up the on-screen keyboard. If you have got a keyboard and mouse you can plug in, I would recommend it. But I did say at the start of the video, no extra hardware required, so I'm going to just use the Steam Deck for this. So type in Etcher, press enter, and then I can press this button to move the keyboard out of the way. This is the website that you want, I'll include the link in the description below. And once you're on this page, you can just choose the download Etcher option. And you'll have a few options here, but the one we want is Etcher for Linux 64-bit. So select download and you can see that download has started. Okay, so now Etcher is downloaded. Open your file browser and go into the Downloads folder. From there, select the zip that you've just downloaded for Etcher and choose the option to extract. Just press Extract and use the default options here and that will make a folder in your Downloads location for Etcher. Now the next thing you need to do is to download the Windows 11 Nerds app image. Now this is quite a large file, it's around 12.7 gig. I've included a couple of links down in the description. Just be patient, it will complete and it'll be absolutely worth it. If you need something to do whilst you're waiting for that to download, why not subscribe to my channel? Okay, so now that's downloaded, you need to go into the Etcher folder and you need to find this file here, it'll be around 170-ish megabytes, depending on the version you've downloaded. Select that. And choose the option to flash from file. Here, you're just going to select the Windows 11 Nerds app image and choose open. Possible Windows image detected. Good, that's what we want. Choose continue and then choose select target. Now be very careful on the screen. You'll see if I choose the show hidden option here, we can see the main drive in my Steam Deck so you don't want to be wiping that. Make sure that it's definitely the micro SD card that you're selecting. And just as a reminder, this will wipe all data on the micro SD card. So just make sure you're happy with that before you proceed. Choose select. 
and now select the option to flash. Getting a warning here because it's telling us it's a large drive, it's just checking that it's not your system drive with your operating system on, so I'm going to say yes I'm sure. And this is where you need your super user password, so I'll just enter that now. Steam key and X, and then you can just type that in. Okay, now I've typed that in, I'm just going to select OK and it will start flashing there. Now I have noticed if you take too long to enter your super user password there, you might get an etch a failed message. If you get that, just start the process again and just try to try to enter it quicker. So this will take a little while, um, 14 minutes. If you didn't subscribe to Nerds that while you were downloading the image, do it now. Have you done it? Okay, cool. So now that's finished, all you need to do is to close out of Etcher, select the menu button and select shut down. Once your Steam Deck's completely off, we need to take it into the boot menu. And to do that, we hold down the volume down button and press the power button and then let go. And that should take us to the boot menu. From here, you can see we can choose to boot into Steam OS or we can choose to boot into our micro SD card. So let's go ahead and do that. You might find it stays on this screen for a little while, but don't worry, it's just starting the Windows setup process. So just give it some time. If you do find it gets stuck on that screen for more than 10 minutes or so, though, just hold down the power button on the Steam Deck and just repeat the process again. Take it into the boot menu, select the micro SD card, and then it should start doing this. You may find that your Steam Deck reboots a couple of times during this process here as well. Don't worry, it should just resume once it reboots and then you should be into the Windows setup in no time. Okay, so now we're in the Windows out of box experience. You may have noticed the screen orientation is incorrect, but don't worry about that. We'll sort it out as soon as we get into Windows. You should be able to bring up the on-screen keyboard by just tapping into this box here and just type a username. If you just tap off the on-screen keyboard, it will disappear. Type a password or set one later by just selecting next, and then it'll just go and do a bit more setup stuff. Almost there, I promise. Told you. Okay, so we're into Windows. The first thing we need to do is sort out the screen orientation. So just long press until you see the box appear around your finger and let go. That's the equivalent of a right click. Choose display settings. And then from here, you can select display orientation. So just select landscape. And it's as simple as that. As I said at the start of this video, all the drivers should already be included in the image. So you should be able to connect to your Wi-Fi straight away. If you have any problems with them, I've added them into a folder on the C drive. So if you just go into this PC, and then there should be a folder called Steam Deck drivers and I've included everything that you need there. You may notice that you're not getting the full capacity of your micro SD card. Don't worry about that, we'll sort it out in a moment. But before we do, I'll just show you how to enable the on-screen keyboard because it should come up when you tap into a text box like this, but it doesn't always. See? So to sort that out, what you need to do is to go into the start menu and select settings. And then from there, choose time and language. Choose typing, touch keyboard, and then this option here, you need to set this to always. And then when you select into a text box, you'll get the on-screen keyboard come up. If you choose this option up here, there are different layouts as well. I like to use this one here as it gives me all the keys I need, including shortcuts such as control, delete, and all the function buttons as well. Okay, so that's sorted. Let's look at the drive capacity issue. So if you go to the start menu, and start typing in here. Computer, and you should get this computer management option. Select that and go into disk management. Now, all these drives down here relate to your Steam Deck's main storage, so best not to touch any of those. As you can see here, we've got the unallocated space on my micro SD card. If I long select this, there should be an option to extend volume, but sometimes it's greyed out and it won't let you extend this disk into the rest of this unallocated space. So you've got a couple of options here. You can either use this unallocated space here to create a new simple volume. Next, next, assign a drive letter. Let's go through all the default options. And then what you'll have 
is this extra drive here with all the remaining capacity of your micro SD card. And that's where you can install your games and things like that if you need to. If you'd rather have all the capacity on your C drive, then there is a way to do it and I'll show you now. If you're happy with this setup, feel free to skip ahead into the FAQs. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to delete this volume here. So we're back at this point. And as you can see, the extend volume is grayed out. So what we need to do is we need to go into start and type in PowerShell. And in PowerShell, we can type disk part. And now we've got the disk part tool. So if I type list space disk, press enter, we've got the disks here that we can select. Now I know that that disk one there is my Steam Deck drive, so we definitely don't want to select that. And you can see here, we've got disk zero with the 380 gigs, so that's the micro SD card. So select space disk zero, press enter, and disk zero is now selected. So now we can do list partition, press enter, so now we've got all the partitions listed on that disk. So what we need to do is select the primary partition, which is partition three. So select partition three, and now we've selected partition three. So if I just type extend, press enter, this part successfully extended the volume. Now while we have to go the long way around, I'm not entirely sure, but at least there is an option. So when you look at your C drive now, you can see it's using the full capacity and I'll just show you how that looks. And there we go, so you've got your C drive there. These drives here relate to the Steam Deck drive. I'm not sure why it allocates some letters, but if you want to remove them for tidiness, then you can just select them in here. So long press, change letters and paths, remove that letter from it, change letters and paths, remove. And now we've got a nice neat setup with the full capacity of your micro SD card. Okay, so now let's get into the FAQs. As I said at the start of the video, I do recommend watching all of this section as it is a list of questions compiled from comments on the previous videos. So this should really help to make everything a bit clearer about the process. So the simple answer to this question is unfortunately no. I wish it was the case that you could use the original Windows 11 image as it would have made the whole process much easier for me rather than having to put a whole image together for you guys to use. But let me explain. If you download the official installation media from Microsoft and flash that onto your micro SD card, all you'd have there would be a micro SD card with the Windows 11 installer on it. You wouldn't have Windows 11 installed. There are ways to put Windows 11 to go images on micro SD cards, but that usually requires a PC or additional software. But just to clarify, I built this from an original Windows 11 image. I've not made any changes to it other than injecting the drivers and getting it all up to date for you. So for SD cards, I recommend at least 64 gigabytes, but you're probably going to want more than that if you're installing games on there as well. One of the most important things is probably the speed of the micro SD card. So you want decent read and write speeds in order to run windows and games and to copy files onto there and things like that. Basically look for micro SD cards that have A2, V30, U3 on them and you can't go wrong, but I will leave a link down in the description for the micro SD cards I recommend and the ones that I use personally. To boot back into the Steam operating system, you've got a couple of options. If you shut down the Steam Deck, just using the standard shutdown option in Windows, you can then remove the micro SD card and boot up and it'll go straight into Steam OS. If you don't want to remove the micro SD card, you can hold the volume down button and the power button at the same time when booting up. And then that will give you the boot menu where you can choose which operating system you'd like to boot into. So unfortunately, the answer to this one is no, you will need a separate micro SD card if you plan to use SteamOS and install games onto the micro SD card. If anyone knows a simple way of splitting the SD card to be shared between Steam and Windows, then please let me know. Perhaps we'll include it in a version three of the video. But what I do is I keep the micro SD card in my Steam Deck case, and then I put that in when I want to use Windows. And if I want to switch back to Steam, and have my games on the other micro SD card, I just switch it back. If you boot up into Steam OS with your Windows 11 SD card in the Steam Deck and try to use it, it will ask you to format it and that would result in you losing the Windows 11 installation from it. 
So you should be able to use the latest version of Etra on the website, but on my previous video, a couple of people tried to use a later version than the one showed in the video and got errors when trying to flash the image. If you're having issues with flashing the image using Etcher, then just check out the description below this video. I'll include the version that I used in the video and try and provide a download link to that as well. As I said, I've included the Steam Deck drivers for both the LCD and the OLED in the image already, so it should just work straight out of the box. I've put a folder on the C drive where you can access them as well if you need to reinstall them for whatever reason, and I've included a link down in the description to the Valve website where you can find the latest drivers. Unfortunately, I can't help you guys with Windows 11 product keys, but what I will say is Windows 11 will work without one. You just lose a couple of options like personalization on the desktop and things like that. So hopefully that's not a big deal to most people, but if it is, you can go and find a product key by yourself. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you now have Windows 11 running on your Steam Deck and hopefully that was simple enough to follow. If you found this video useful, please drop a like and do consider subscribing as well. Thank you to everybody out there that subscribed already. I really do appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next one.